everyone. Welcome to Learning at Eleventh Hour. In this video, I'm going to tell you how we can design a sequence detector. So, if you're going to design a sequence detector as a sequential circuit, then the design steps are precisely going to be the same, wherein we start with the state diagram, and we go on to obtaining the state transition table, the state table, followed by uh, the uh, flip-flop excitation table from which we obtain the ex uh, equations for the inputs of the flip-flop and then we uh, realize the logical circuit of the entire sequential circuit from this. So this being the sequence, the first step here is to obtain the state diagram. Of course, after which we go for state reduction, etc. But all we have is say, a single sentence which says, design a network so that you're able to detect a particular sequence. So from that information about the sequence, how do we obtain the state diagram? So this is what we're going to be looking at in today's video. So to begin with, what really does a sequence detector mean? So this is uh, how it's defined. So this is going to be a circuit which will examine a string of zeros and ones these zeros and ones are applied to some uh, input, say, x. And depending upon the kind of sequence in which the zeros and ones appear at the input x, an output z will be generated or will be made high only if the required sequence is encountered. So let's take up this example where I want to detect the input sequence which ends in 1101. So it might be a long string with lots of ones and zeros, but wherever we have a 1101 occurring in the entire span of the string, the output Z should go high. So having said that, suppose I want to uh, obtain the state diagram for this uh, particular situation. So let's say I begin with an initial state and I'll call it as state A. So this state basically corresponds to reset. So this is the initial state, the starting state. Now from this state, it is possible to obtain two uh, inputs, right? One is where x is equal to 0. The other is where x is going to be equal to 1. Now, it is going to depend on whether we are designing a Moore circuit or a Mealy circuit. Right? If we are going to design a mealy circuit, then we can embed the output over the transition itself. And if it is a Moore, we have to embed the output inside the state. So we'll be looking at both the cases. Right now, let's just figure out what the different states are. Let's define the states. So now, if the when it is in state A, if it encounters a 0, 0 is not part of the sequence as, at all. So it will remain in state A. It will remain in the reset state, waiting for... Uh, the sequence, right? That the required sequence. On the other hand, if it encounters uh, an input x equal to 1, then it is going to move on to the next state, state B, where this state is going to represent the fact that the first one of the sequence has been encountered. So this is what this state represents, right? Now, when I'm in state B, I can again encounter two inputs. One is when it is 0. The other is when it is 1. So when it is 0, uh, 0 is not the next uh, input that should be occurring as per this sequence. So therefore, it is going to make a transition back to the reset state because it will become something like 1, 0. But what I need is 1, 1, 0, 1. So this is the wrong place where the 0 has occurred. So it will go back to reset state. Reset state is nothing but A. Suppose it encounters this 1 again. So now what happens is it's got 1, 1, which is like almost halfway through our required sequence. So then it is going to move to the next state. I'll call it state C. This state represents the fact that the second 1 of the sequence has been encountered. So after this, when in state C, Again, it can receive either a 0 or a 1. If it's going to receive a 0, so now it would become 1, 1, 
zero, which is like almost there for our sequence, right? Which is the correct input of our sequence. So I can move to state D. Otherwise, if it's going to encounter something like, so there's a, probably it was like already one, one. Suppose it encounters another one. So when it is in state C, it represents the fact that already the second one has been encountered. But after this, if again another one comes, then what happens is uh, our sequence now shifts here, right? Now this would kind of tend to become the first one. Then this will become the second one. And if another 0, 1 occurs here, so now this would become my sequence. We thought it would be 1, 1, 0, 1. But it turns out that it's probably 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. But this is the sequence that I want. So therefore, if I receive a 1 when I'm in state C, then what I do is I would remain in state C, indicating that this is the second one that has been encountered. So having said that, let's move on to state D. When it is in state D, so that means I'm already here. I've got 1, 1, 0. This is what it represents, right? If I receive another 1, it means that my uh, sequence is complete, right? So which means that I can go to two places. One is... I can either go to the fact that this is the starting of my next sequence, provided I'm going to uh, detect an overlapping sequence. Or if I want to have it in a non-overlapping manner, in that case, um, it would actually go to A itself. right? So here, let me just put it down as B. So here I have my first one of my next probable sequence encountered. This is what it's going to mean, right? So the first one is encountered is what state B represents. Now, after D, if I get a 1, I'll have to uh, indicate that my output is 1. And I have to make a transition to another state where it could be the state where the first one of the next sequence is encountered. So that is why the B over here. But suppose. If I'm in state D, which means I have 1, 1, 0, and I'm encountering a 0 again. So this is nowhere close to our sequence. So therefore, it is going to go to state A and reset our entire um, sequence, right? And the entire thing is going to, the state diagram would get reset again. So uh, state D, here I would like to mention that represents the fact that 0 of the sequence is encountered. Okay, over here, uh, when I'm making a transition to state B, it means the first one of the next sequence, right, is encountered. So from this uh, information, can I now draw a state diagram? So now the entire process becomes pretty simple. Let me show you how. So suppose I have state A. And uh, from state A, I'm going to get, say, a, a 0. And it's going to remain in the same state. And what about the output? Since the sequence is not detected yet, the output is going to remain 0. OK, let me look at state B now. right? So it's going to make a transition to state B when a 1 is arriving as the input. But the output will remain 0. So I'll call this a state B. From state B, if I receive a 0, it should go back to A. But even in this case, the output would remain 0 because the sequence is not detected. If I receive a 1, it should make a transition to state C. But the output would still be 0. Now, when I'm in state C, if I'm going to receive a 0, it will go to state D. But the output would still be 0 because the entire sequence is not yet detected. If I receive a 1, when I'm in state C, it will remain in the same state with the output 0. When I'm in state D, now if I receive a 1, it is going to make a transition to state B. 
with the output 1 meaning that the sequence has been detected and the last one of my sequence becomes the first one of the next sequence. But if I receive a 0 when I'm in state D, it would go back to reset state and the output would be 0 still. So this is how we develop the mealy state diagram for a overlapping sequence detector. Let us now uh, try to develop the mealy state diagram for a non-overlapping sequence. So precisely the entire uh, state diagram is going to remain the same except for the last step. So here in the last step, we said that when it is in state D, it is going to make a transition to uh, state B when a 1 is encountered and state A when a 0 is encountered. So now how does this scenario change? Right? So when it is in state D, if it encounters a 0, it is going to go to state A, no change in that. But if it encounters a 1, it is going to go to another new state, state E, which represents the fact that the sequence has been detected. So the output in that case is going to be 1. So now that we have another state, we have to again examine what would happen when we received a 0 and 1 after this. So if we receive a 0 after 1, 1, after 1, 1, 0, 1, if we receive a 0, it's like going back to reset. But after 1, 1, 0, 1, if we receive a 1, uh, it can be considered as the starting of the next sequence. So now I can make it move to uh, state B, but the output in this case would be 0. So what am I basically doing? Suppose I have a sequence like this, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, right? So here, we are able to look at two cases here. The first one is where we have this as our first sequence and this is our second sequence. So with the help of this state diagram, we can detect these overlapping sequences. But with the help of the state diagram, which I would be showing right now with a new state E, we are not going to detect the overlapping states. So in that case, we will be able to detect something like this. So it is going to end here and the new sequence is going to start here. Precisely meaning that the last one of my previous sequence is not going to be the starting of my next sequence. So accordingly, we have introduced the state E to make these changes. So now how does our state diagram look? So if we go for it, let's say we have uh, A. This is the non-overlapping case. So if we start with state A, it is going to remain in state A. The output is going to be a 0 for the input 0. For input 1, it will go to state B, but the output will be 0. When in state B, if it encounters a 0, it will go to A, output being 0 state c 1 0 1 0 so precisely the previous uh, state diagram is going to remain intact till state d so here we have 0 from state d there is a slight change so if we encounter a 0 it should go to a meaning in this manner the output being 0 but if it encounters a 1, instead of going to state B with an output 1, I'm going to go to a new state E with the output 1, right? From state E, if I get a 0, it will go back to state A. And if I get a 1, it is going to go to state B. And in both the cases, the outputs are going to be 0. So this is the uh, mealy state diagram for non-overlapping sequence detector. On the other hand, this one is the mealy state diagram for an overlapping sequence detector. If I now want to convert this uh, mealy machine, let's take the overlapping case. If I want to convert it into a Moore machine, then what do I do? So that is a pretty simple process. We just need to understand that here we are going to have 
say state A for this is for more, right? It's going to be having an output of zero. And when the input is uh, zero, it is going to remain here. When the input is one, it is going to go to state B, but the sequence is not yet detected. So the output will be zero. From state B, when I get a zero, it will go back to state A. The output is zero. That is true. When it is going to get a one, when in state B, it is going to go to C. Right now, we've encountered the sequence one, one. So therefore, the output of the state C is still going to be zero because it's only going to represent that the second one has been detected. From C, if I receive a zero, it is going to go to move to state D with the output zero. And for encountering a one, it will remain in the same state. From state D, here it is going to go to the state E with the output rather than 0, it is going to be 1 here. Why? Because now our sequence is detected provided the input here we receive is 1. So precisely we have 1, 1, 0, 1. When this sequence arrives, it goes to state E and the output now becomes 1. But suppose I am in state D and I encounter a 0, then I have to go to the reset state. Suppose I'm in state E, I am encountering a 0, then it becomes reset. That is the next state. And if I am encountering a 1, then I'm going to go to state B. So this is the Moore machine, again, for non-overlapping. And we can realize only this because we do need this extra state E with the output 1. Because we are embedding the outputs within the state, the non-overlapping is easily possible. Following this, we have to go for something called as the state reduction. You can refer to my previous videos. There are two ways that I've discussed. One is the row elimination. The other is the uh, implication table method. And following that, we arrive at the smaller state table from which we go for the flip-flop excitation table and then the equations for the inputs for the flip-flop and then the logical implementation. So if you notice, obtaining the correct state diagram for any particular sequence uh, is the very critical step as far as design of sequence detectors is concerned. So that's all with today's video. I hope uh, how we have to uh, analyze the sequence and uh, decide how many states and what kind of states are required and how we frame the state diagram using either Moore or Mealy is clear to you all. If you have any queries, please do not hesitate to post them in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching this video.